Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's subject is an introduction to thinking of how we negotiate corners. But why is it that a lot of motorcycle riders understand there comes a level of fear in relation to a lack of confidence or indeed a lack of understanding of how your motorcycle works whilst cornering? So why is that? Why is it that we feel less confident with some things but more confident with others? It's quite simple. It's called experience. But first of all, to understand corners, we must begin to understand ourselves. And was it not Aristotle who said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom? So how do we gain this experience? If you have a willingness and a desire to learn, you will find the time and the resources to learn by seeking out information, learning from others and putting things into practice. It's so easy, after all, We've all been doing it since birth, but here's the pinch. Sometimes we want to be able to do things for reasons that we don't quite understand or indeed accept that not everyone can do everything that everyone else can do. And if we could, there wouldn't be any experts or teachers or leaders. So you decided you want to ride and ride well. You've passed your riding test for the street and have gained some experience to keep you safe but cornering still presents some problems. So let's take a look at the reasons why. So here we have a typical rider on a typical bend being followed by a typical riding friend. And what I'm going to do is show you three examples, one of a typical rider, an advanced official rider, and an experienced rider. So what we've done here is we've freeze framed the picture to show certain things. So let's take a look at that. This typical rider has uh, observed that there's a bend ahead, a right hand bend in this situation. They've arrived in a central position within their side of the road and they've used their levels of control to slow down the motorcycle in whichever way they do normally. At this point, they're about to enter the bend in the position that they've chosen and let's see how that works out. Now this particular rider can now see further around the bend than their following friend. Their body position looks quite vertical compared to the fact they're leaning the bike and yet they're maintaining a central position as they negotiate the bend. What this does, it limits your entry and negotiation speed because you've reduced the width of your road by half and it would be not the ideal position to enter a bend from. So as the lead rider continue to negotiate the bend in a central position, as they begin to exit, they look up the road and they see, as indicated by the right hand white arrow, a white car coming towards them on the op opposite side of the road. So they upright the motorcycle and move over to the left side of their lane to create distance between them and the oncoming car. But the following rider who started the entrance of the bend equally in a central position, has turned into the bend too early without good observation through and beyond the bend and now is in a position nearer to the white line with a vehicle coming towards and the thing to bear in mind is these camera angles always make it look as if obstacles are double the distance away of what they are in reality so this car coming towards is much closer than it shows in the picture this is not the ideal situation to be in when negotiating a blind bend. So to summarize two typical riders on a typical right hand bend, both with central approach position, one runs wide on exit, one turns too tight on exit. But if you wish to seek out the alleged experts in the UK, you have Bike Safe, an awareness course conducted by serving class one police riders, whereas Rosper and IM Road Smart are simply civilian staffed profit-making organizations who recruit ex-traffic police to do their work. And first of all, they would reference this particular uh, publication, Motorcycle Roadcraft, the Police Riders Handbook. It's used to train the Class 1 serving police riders and equally as a publication within IM, Roadsmart and Rosper alike. And if we look to page 189, Positioning for Advantage, there's a 2D diagram showing three rider positions on the left side of the road in our lane. 
position one being the near side two central and three to the right and if you're to negotiate a left hand bend you would approach in position number three and to negotiate a right hand bend you would approach in position number one so here we have a still photograph of a rider riding on a slightly overcast day but dry roads there's hazard marks marked centrally within the road with the white lines and he's approaching a brow of a hill with a right hand bend. This rider is indeed a class one police rider instructor demonstrating his position and it would be advised from the road craft police riders handbook that the left position or position one would be the suitable position on approach to a right hand bend but what this picture does highlight is their choice of a limit point and the limit point they say is where you have an uninterrupted view of the road surface ahead and it's generally where the two sides of the road surface appear to meet in the middle. This then gives them a fixed point of which they focus and allows them to decide when they need to adjust their speed on approach. And by adjusting their speed, they would operate their brakes to achieve the required speed. And equally then at that point, if needed, you would then select a lower gear to suit the forward momentum of the motorcycle. But because this rider is indeed in the wrong position, he might have to enter this bend slower than he originally anticipated. The same class one police rider now moves on to a, another right hand bend and he's asked himself, where do I want to be? And this time he's remembered what the roadcraft manual said and he has opted to select the left hand position, position one on his approach. But it appears, unfortunately, as he's negotiated the bend, he's decided to turn in away from position one across a metalled manhole cover, which is part of the instructions to avoid them where possible. And even though the road surface could be dry, it's a good training point to avoid them when you can so that when you ride in the wet, it becomes second nature and it's not a further distraction or lapse of safety. So avoiding manhole covers is always best avoided. And it would be here that I would highlight the differences from a typical street rider to that of a class one police riding instructor. But it appears to me that the differences aren't so great. And I'm not quite sure what I can say about that. One would expect more. So here we have an experienced rider riding in overcast and damp conditions on a reasonably straight to windy road. Uh, medium traffic towards, we're adopting position 2 but moving into position 1 with a left mirror check. In anticipation of the right hand bend coming towards, you want to look down and beyond the two cars in front. Looking for any obstacles and hazards coming towards both left and right hand side of the roads. Maintain a position 1 still for the hazards to the right and vehicles towards. And maintaining the view on your rear view mirrors in anticipation should you need to slow down and indeed stop. Once again, for the right hand bend, just bear in mind the approach position is position one, keeping tight into the near side, but you can, if safe to do so, move through position two and into position three, as in this particular case, just briefly to look down the left hand side of the two cars in front of myself, and equally then back to position two to maintain a safety bubble as you continue on through a left hand bend. So as seen in this video, using the hazard that is a right hand bend here in the UK as a single hazard we simply highlighted things to consider on your approach to the bend there will be more videos to break down how to fully negotiate the bend and all the different aspects that go with it but it's fair to say here we saw the difference between a typical rider eye view to that of a deemed expert and trainer to a experienced street rider we all have our different views on how we get from A to B, but as long as we do it safely and return home, that surely is the main thing. I hope that you've liked this video. It is purely a single video focused on thought provoking and shows the difference between how different people ride. And if you've liked the video, then please like and subscribe. There will be more videos coming, so ring that bell and stay tuned. And I hope to see you out on the next video. So bye for now and keep it safe.